Hi everybody, this is Monica from Huckleberry Mountain Botanical School of Herbalism and I'm here with Lindy, Lindy. my daughter. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different today because tomorrow I have a, um, what is it? Presentation. Yes, a presentation on forest edibles. Hi Sean. And to get ready for anything that I do when we're talking about edibles or we're trying to encourage people to wildcraft or forage, I always bring lots of samples. I bring samples because I think that's more inspiring. Yeah. Uh, interactive. Yeah, and people can actually, you know, taste it and maybe feel like, oh, yeah, this isn't so bad. Because a lot of times when you introduce wild food to people that haven't had wild food before, they think it's not going to taste very good because they're used to that cultivated um, farmed food that they can access at the grocery store. And going out and foraging is a little bit more work. So in order to motivate people to do that little extra bit of work and get out there, I like to bring lots of samples. So I'm not making all of the samples I'm bringing tomorrow because I'm bringing quite a few different things, some, um, some pesto made of dandelion and nettle. I'm bringing some nettle chips. We're bringing dandelion root coffee. I know, elderberry syrup, rosehip jam, and dandelion flour shortbread, and I'm going to bring some edible, um, you know, tasty little leaves and flowers so that we can sort of throw together a wild salad. I don't know what we're going to call it, but we won't be making that today. Today, Lindy is the shortbread maker of our home. Hi, Rhonda. Uh, so she's going to make her typical shortbread cookies. This is going to be interesting because we've actually, um, hi, Lorinda. Uh, I have something. I just went out wild crafting, and so um, I have stuff in my hair and all that. But we're, we're just going to throw in some dandelion petals that we just pulled out this morning and make them into dandelion and a little bit of lemon. We have some lemon zest in there, um, shortbread cookies. I just think... You know, okay, I'm just going to talk about dandelion flour for a minute. I know that a lot of people think of it as um, sort of the, the bane of the lawn and, and they're, you know, trying to eradicate and destroy it. But it's the sunniest, happiest flower. It's the first, you know, one of the first things that comes up in spring. It's one of the first um, flowers available for the pollinators and the bees and for them to get out and start getting some of their their food, their stuff that they need to move them out of winter into spring. And it blesses us not only with all its nutrition and food, but its sunny disposition. We all like sunniness, right? And it is the sunny kind of brings the sunshine in. Hi, Kana. And, um, and bringing it into cookies brightens it up. Mm -hmm. It just brightens everything up when you have some yellow, bright dandelion. Calendula is the same way, that kind of bright, sunny disposition. I personally think it's just it's like a spring upper without medication. <laughs> it brings us that happiness. And, and lemon is the same way. It's that bright, um, you know, tangy flavor. And so putting dandelion and lemon together in a cookie, to me, makes sense. So, eat your wings. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. Okay, so we're going to start out with that, and right now I actually have some pine needles that I've been infusing for about a half an hour at this point, and I'll be turning that into a syrup using some honey, so I'll just show you that really, really quick, and how to identify pine. My favorite to use in these is white, but you can use fir and you can use spruce, and almost every pine is perfectly fine. I usually stay away from ponderosa because it has some issues with especially pregnant women, but um, everything else is, is pretty safe. And then I will quickly show you um, an elderberry syrup. And I'm going to finish my rose hip jam that I've been soaking all night. It is the easiest. And I, we call it jam. It, it's, it is jam. It's just super, super, super easy. Like I say, everything is easy, right? Yeah. Okay. Herbalism's easy. Although you put like five different easy things together. I know. <laughs> so it, we may just have to stop before everything's done. But... You know, we'll, like, we'll post a picture of it later yeah. if we can't. Yeah. All, All right, right, so when can we get started? I'm going to start with the shortbread. And if you've ever made shortbread before, it is literally the easiest thing to make on the planet. For real. Um, yeah. I don't know. 
So I just have a couple of flour here. And I guess we'll, we'll probably are we going to upload this to free herbal content? Yeah. Okay. So to make it even easier, I'm using a food processor. So I've got the flour, sugar, and what I'm going to do. Hmm? Oh, I was going to say how much, but I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. I just mix that together, and then I add the butter, which is cubed and supposed to be cold. Well, it's been sitting out. It's been while. sitting out. So yeah, I just add it like that. What does it look like? It's supposed to look like crumblies. Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, um, like coarse meal. Is that what people yeah. say? Yeah. So like crumbly and you can't see it. Ah. No, you still can't see it. The light the is too weird. Bad. Yeah. So it's like almost like sand, like slightly moist sand. Moist. Moist. <laughs> <laughs> If anyone out there doesn't like the word moist, you might not want to watch this. Yeah. So use gluten-free flour blend. Probably. We you'd have to mess around with uh, ratios. the ratios. Of, yeah, because sometimes it can be a lot drier. drier. Yeah. Um, and you could, yeah. you could easily substitute coconut oil for butter. You might have a little bit mm -hmm. of a different texture because coconut oil tends to... And the to flavor. Melt. I mean, oh, the, the, flavor. Butter, the butter makes it so creamy mm -hmm. and delicious. And buttery and melty, and I mean, but coconut oil is fine. Gee, <laughs> <laughs> can you tell what you like? Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna put my oh, herb my. in. But no, I don't. I'm sorry. Put the water in a little bit. Okay. Well, I normally just, she gonna, does put the herb in because we normally make lavender and yeah. lemon. But I really don't want to. I'm gonna start by putting like a teaspoon of water. I just don't want to grind these in. You don't want to grind them in. I just want to stir because it'll. I think it'll ruin the integrity and it'll all turn yellow. Okay. Got it. You're part of our experimentation here, people. Yeah. All right. You can see it's beginning to come together, but it still needs just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And then I tiny think bit. when it's done, we're going to go ahead and just blend in the lemon and just really quickly. Like if you if you do want to do that, keep things a little bit more whole, then you obviously wouldn't. Add them until the end, but I usually do lavender, so it's better if they're super, super small, small so that you don't get a big chunk yeah. of lavender, which isn't very good, and it's equally infused. I also have done, like, hibiscus and rose, and all those times I have ground it as well, but it makes it such a pretty pink color. Yeah. So. So you basically want to do it until it starts coming together as a dough, and then you can now we just look, you can smash it together and it stays together like that. But it, it can't be too soft, so it's balanced. I probably Is added like two together? teaspoons. Yeah. Okay. Because you want to start in? Yeah, I think we could just massage, massage, massage it in, massage in into the moist. Dough. And I have a quarter cup of dandelion flour. When I did the dandelion flour, we did not include the greens at all. And it's just a little bit of zest, of lemon zest in here. Because that will add bitterness. Yeah, the greens will have bitterness. So, wait a second, let me move this so you can see. The easiest way I found to pull the flowers out is, is to take the, um, the green part, what's this called? The receptacle. The receptacle, sorry. And pinch it really hard, kind of around, and then you can actually easily grab the yellow petals right out, and it, it just pulls super, super simple out. Yeah, and another thing about shortbread is you don't want to overwork it. So, like, I'm mixing everything in, but you don't want to to do it too much because it'll get tough, and it, will, it won't be as 
like crispy. And yeah, light. crispy and like melty and almost. Well, it's probably good. I don't know. Melty sounds good. Melty and it'll be tougher. So you don't want that. Yeah. So that's about mixing. Yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. And now do we sit it in the fridge? Yeah, you're technically supposed to let it sit in the fridge for about half an hour. We're not going to do that, least. but we'll sit it in the fridge for a little while while we now move mm -hmm. on to um, the elderberry syrup, which, by the way, is, again, really easy. Um, I'm going to make a quick one this morning, so I'm only using, let's see what my measurements are, quarter cup berries. About, and I'm going to add a tablespoon of elderflower, but I'm going to do that after we're done simmering. To the berries, I'm adding cinnamon chips, and I made these um, Ceylon cinnamon. You have top. Taut. Oh, Maybe taut. Taut. <laughs> Maybe taut. Yeah. Um, and, and some sliced fresh ginger. You can use um, dry ginger if you want. We just happen to have fresh here, so that's, that's nice. And then the water, we're adding six ounces of water. So I'm just going to add that really, really quick. Where's my measuring? That's oh, good. that's over here. Oh, right there. Six ounces of water, so that's three quarters of a cup. And how long do you simmer this? Well, unfortunately, it's going to be longer than I'd like, but I'm going to simmer it for probably half an hour. So you guys won't be here when we're done simmering, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, we, we, we both talked. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to put this on to simmer. And it's just, you know, it's just going to pull it out. And I'm going to allow it to reduce slightly. I want it to get down to about four ounces of liquid. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on to simmer right now. Okay, I'm gonna let this cool. In the meantime, okay, so this is the first time I have made this version of this rose hip jam because it was a super simple overnight jam concoction. Okay, I can't remember exactly. I'll, I'll be putting the recipe out there, but there is literally two ingredients unless you wanna add a little bit of lemon. Um, I added the tiniest little bit of lemon zest that we had left from the cookies. This is rose hips and juice, and you bring it to a simmer and let it simmer for about four or five minutes, turn it off, cover it, and let it sit overnight, and now it's soft and mushy, which means I need the hand blender. The hand blender, okay. Sorry, so I, I, you know what, the thing is, I'm including you guys in my like getting ready for tomorrow thing here, trying to like kill two birds with one stone. I don't, I don't know why people would do that, but, um, and so you're with me in real time when I'm trying to just throw things together and make them. Rose hips are not the easiest thing to, um, to forage. They can be a bit tedious, especially if you end up with smaller rose hips. Uh, and some of them are a lot more hairy. I did get these dried from Mountain Rose Herbs. Because they're cut in half and you know all the, the hairs are taken out, you are welcome to do it, you know, forage, go out and get it. And as a matter of fact, you can make tea out of it, which is very, very high in vitamin C. And you don't have to cut it or anything like that so the hairs wouldn't bother you. I watched a video one time of a woman that was trying to show, you know, how easy it is to uh, to do rose hips, and it took her hours. She, she had this video going, and then she's like, okay, well, I'll be back in a little while. And then she said an hour later, and she gets back on. She's like, well, I'm about a quarter of the way through. She had these tiny little rose hips, and she was de-seeding and pulling the hairs out. And, and everyone's like, yeah, that didn't look easy at all. I don't know. I would have even posted. I would have been like, yes. Yeah, it looked, um, it looked really tough. So, you know, you want foraging to be fun. And so going out and picking the rose hips is great and leaving them whole and using them in, uh, I don't know, some sort of syrups or anything like that where you're not mashing them down would totally work. Unless you're, you know, Netflixing and you're, you're going for like yeah. a marathon of some sort yeah. <laughs> and then you want to use that time to do rose hips. Great. All right, so we're going to try this here. I'm going to try not to spray Lindy or I. <laughs> Well, oddly cut. 
colored. I ended up using an organic pear juice that we had and these rose hips. Um, so the color's a little bit more. It's certainly not a bright red. <laughs> um, but it, it looks good. I need a spatula to get it off this thing. Oh, I'm just ready to eat it. Oh, you're going to try it? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Lindy's got the, the bread and she's ready to go. So again, this was a super, super easy jam. And you could serve this on toast or crackers. You know what it would be really good on because I'm ta I tasted it earlier before I blended it? Is um, with some cheese and maybe like a basil, like a basil and a slice of a nice cheese, maybe even brie or goat cheese. Goat cheese would be good too. I think I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice to it. Mm. Again, this is the way I cook. How is it? Looks good. I like it. Let me add a little bit of tangy. Lindy apparently likes it. So, all right. So that's a really, really super easy way to make rose hip jam. And I'm always telling people this: if you're going to invite friends over and you want to look like a rock star, make wild food. You know, tell people like, oh, this is rose hip jam. Oh, they, I just picked these flowers yesterday. Kana, you did that, right? Did you bring your, did you end up bringing your wild salad? I know it's going to take us minutes to hear, but your wild salad to, um, what was it? Some potluck that you were doing or something? I saw you saying that you were going to bring a wild salad somewhere. Okay, now what I would do with this jam is just put it in a small jar and just keep it in the fridge and let Lindy eat it over the next few days. It's Lindy approved. It's, you know, again, it's high in vitamin C, and then you're getting, you know, really good, healthy, tasty food. All right, so that was super simple. The dandelion flower shortbread, do you think it's cool enough mm -hmm. to be able to work with? And then pretty soon, my pine, my pine infusion, I think, will be cool enough for us to be able to add the honey to it and make this easy syrup. I love making syrups, partly because children will eat them, but you can also add them to sparkling water or, again, mixed drinks, um, or you can serve them on food or put them into smoothies or whatever. It just makes a super simple um, food that most people like, and that's that's always great. I'm gonna go check on the here. All right, so. You don't want to, I mean, I guess you could make them whatever size you want, but let me show you how I do it. I just take, like, a spoon, <laughs> and I roll them into balls, and then let me show you what I do after that. So, a ball about this size, it's probably, like, I don't know, a tablespoon, and then I take a fork, and I... Smash it down until it's flat, and then I go like that. So you can see, maybe. Can you see? The there, well, because it's not. Eh, can't you see? Nope, you can't. <laughs> it looks cool. Just trust me. And they are flat, and then they'll pretty much stay the same, pretty much the same shape as you do. So. Yeah, and you could top that. As a matter of fact, I saw a photo earlier. I've seen lots of shortbread recipes where they will put herb like on the top to laminate it onto it. Okay. But let me just make one that's smooth. Okay. We're gonna try that. I I have I've been gathering um, violas, and so we are going to press it on there. I'm gonna remove this little green part so it maybe will stay flatter. Without trying to ruin the flower. Flatten this. And then you want to like push whatever herb you want to put in. And then it oh, should. Oh, it's going to be so it's pretty. Be really I hope it works actually, out. Yeah, I'm actually kind of excited for that. Okay, I think we should do a few. And if they don't turn out, well, I'll eat them. Yeah, people have to eat what I bring, so it doesn't matter. 
And, you know, the great thing about shortbread is, you know, you have the basic recipe, you know, the, the flour, sugar, butter, and a little bit of water. But you can add any flavor you want. Usually I do lavender. You can do lemon. You, I've seen a lot of people do rosemary, like rosemary lemon. Mm -hmm. um, you can make sweet, savory, anything that you want, really. That one's a crazy one. It's beautiful. Love it. Oh, these are going to be so pretty. They can't. Can you guys see them? They can mm. see purple. Love yeah, it. Let me show you this one. There we go. Yeah, these are just, these are so, they're so easy and you can, like Lindy said, make them into whatever you want. Any flavor you want. I wonder if we should use it using a bottom of the jar. Mm -hmm. I guess it doesn't matter. All right, here, are you going to press that one in? Yeah. These are so pretty. Are they just going to keep staring at me doing this? Oh, I don't know. We're talking. <laughs> All right. So let me see if this is cool enough. And then I can strain it. I'm going to stick the jam in here. So she can get this. It's a very jam-like texture. It's just a little bit odd color, I think. Yeah, the color is not very appealing. Oh, you know what it tastes like? Is homemade fruit roll-ups. Like the kind. Oh, totally. Yes, the kind where you blend fruit and then dehydrate it and it's magically delicious that kind. Yeah, because it's it's not super sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but it does look a little bit like baby diarrhea and they ate beets. Yeah. <laughs> So the color isn't spectacular. I think maybe next time I, I might try to figure out how we can brighten the color a little bit. Nobody wants to eat baby diarrhea. Uh, no. Oh, that would be perfect. You know those um, baby showers where they have those games? Oh, where they eat chocolate they eat out of the diaper. Chocolate out of the diaper? No. We, could, we could totally use rose dip jam. No. no, it would be. You see, here's the thing. I think that aside from the psychological aspect of you're eating something brown out of a diaper it's also really gross in that there's melted chocolate and it's possibly like seeping into the diaper itself and then you're eating the chocolate after it's been sitting inside a diaper that's got chemicals in it you know? oh i know we could do cloth diapers. like mm. just saying just seems disturbing to me I, you know, I'm struggling with how I'm going to strain this because I'm actually going to show you guys one of the easiest ways to strain anything. The problem with this method is that it's not going to get every single little bit of water out because there's no, so there's not enough. I'm afraid this isn't going to go down far enough. There's just not enough liquid in there. So I'm going to use my other thing. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, guys, you get to deal with, with this is me. This is me running around, and this is what I do. Okay, so all I need here is an infusion. And now I'm going to put the infusion with the pine. Let's see if I can get the pine needles to come out. In here. Oh, it smells really good. This is so good for congestion, you know, for any kind of chest congestion. And also is really high in vitamin C. I think it really tastes delicious. Some people don't like the taste of pine. But like I said, you can use other, other things. And one thing I've discovered is that different pines, uh, not only whether it's a white pine or a... Ponderosa. Lodgepole. Ponderosa. Oh, what's the other one? Yeah, Ponderosa. Um, they, they taste different, but also depending on where it's growing, it's going to taste different. So I've got my liquid here. It's cooled almost to room temperature, and I'm going to be adding a quarter cup honey. And this is what I'm going to tell you 
about doing this is if you get it in there and you feel like, oh, it needs needs more honey to be thicker or sweeter, go ahead and do it. You know, it's it's a very flexible. And honey is antibacterial too. Yeah, and honey is good for you as long as you're using raw and you're not cooking it, which is the reason why you're getting it to this kind of room temperature so you're not doing it in super hot and um, ruining the honey. I'm gonna go ahead and use this measuring cup to stir this in. And just stir it up. And this will just have that pine, pine flavor, which I think is a little bit citrusy. So even adding some lemon juice into this would be perfectly fine. It would be a nice blend with the, with the pine. And like I said before, adding this to some sparkling water would be a nice refreshing drink, even in the summer. So. Okay, and I'll be adding this recipe for the pine needle syrup. Um, to the free herbal content as well. I think probably what I'll do is do one, just one lesson that's in there and include all these different recipes within that, but I'm not sure. I might break it up. So just make sure to go in, sign up for my free herbal content at huckleberrybotanicals.com. Uh, you know, go to the herbal school and you can get access to that. Also, if you're watching this on somewhere else besides Huckleberry Mountain Botanicals Facebook page, go to my Facebook page and like it. I do lives twice a week, and we do all different types of things. They're not all the same. Uh, today's is a little bit different because, like I said, I'm trying to get ready for a talk tomorrow. And then I also have my herb students coming on Saturday, so it's a little bit of a busy weekend for me. And so I was like, yeah, people are going to have to join me on live and, and um, just – be part of what I'm doing here and preparing. All right, so we got our shortbread in the oven. When I put it in at 350 for anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. I tasted it. It's delicious. And we got our rose hip jam. We have our pine syrup done. And the only thing I have left is the elderberry syrup. Unfortunately, that's going to have to simmer for another 20 minutes or so. After that's done, I'm going to add the elderflowers and let it sit for about 15 minutes so that they can um, infuse in, in there. And then I'll be adding the honey and some fresh squeezed lemon to kind of just boost its um, immune boosting, <laughs> make it more immune boosting, to increase its um, immune boosting stuff. And, and also, you know, it makes it taste nice. So with the cinnamon and the ginger and the lemon and then the elderberries, which some of those were uh, ones I wildcrafted from last year. Some of them were ones that I bought because I go through a lot of elderberries every single year. So, um, but this is a this is a good time to start looking out for elderflowers, which are also really really good. So, okay, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. We will be sharing the recipes, and we're really glad that um, so many people joined us. I appreciate it, and I do like to hear feedback and get ideas, things that you guys are interested in learning so that I can um, do some, some videos for you specifically. So that is it, and I guess we will say goodbye, and until next time, help enjoy. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook. <laughs>